my friends, welcome back to another story in the life of the old time rock and roller. In today's story, we will cover the writing and the recording of the songs that led to the Blues in a Bucket CD, one of my greatest accomplishments. In my last story, in the spring of 2019, Becky Wright had left the band. And I needed a break. I needed a vacation. So we packed it up and went to my ancestral homeland in Ireland and Scotland. But that trip is so detailed, I'm going to save it for another story. Now, when we were still together as the Forrest MacDonald Band with the old lineup, we had recorded two songs, Powerhouse and Let the Love in Your Heart.
I got my great friend Andrew Black and drummer extraordinaire John McKnight lined up for the session for all of the songs. Now, I wrote my DJ friend, WRFG Blues Man DJ Extraordinaire, Doug Ketchum. He goes by Blackjack on the air, and we've been friends for 30 years. I said, Blackjack, who is the best promoter that you know? He said, that would have to be Mark Pucci. He worked with Capricorn Records and did the Allman Brothers and the Marshall Tucker Band and everybody. So I said, this sounds great. So I contacted Mark Pucci and he agreed for three months to promote the record. And he sent me a very extensive mailing list of all the magazines, the web logs, everybody. And he included some tour support. A lady named Kathy who was working at Southern Music Distributors when I got my very first distribution deal for On Fire was now working with Mark. And they said, look, whatever city you're in, let us know and we'll give you the advance press release for all the newspapers so we can hit it hard with all of your information and build the crowd. So I thought this was great. I decided to use as my record promoter, I used Todd Glazer, my old friend who has promoted three or four of my other albums. So I knew Todd would do a great job. Things were looking good, coming together. I booked the session and just Lee, the, my bass player and I, drove down to Dogwood Studio. Once again, Ron Benner was behind the console. John McKnight showed up to play the drums and we just knocked those songs right out of the park. Man, they were sounding good. So Lee and I drove back home and I asked Ron to get some of the best studio players he had, a horn section, and a great piano player to play on the record. And the horns and the piano, mwah, the piste de resistance, it sounded so good. Now the song that to me was almost the highlight of the record, Let the Love in Your Heart, very emotional, very positive, I asked Ron to get some gospel singers to sing behind Go to the Light. It's the only gospel song I've ever written, but it's also on the record. Ron started sending me the test mixes with the horns, the piano, the gospel singers. Man, it was great. So I got Ed Unitsky, who I've mentioned on several other videos, Ed did the cover work for Turnaround Blues. And I told him on the cover, I wanted sort of a, a big old pot like Mickey Mouse had in Fantasia and that dance with the broom. And he went to the pot and all these musical notes and stars and everything were coming out. I sent Ed a few of my ideas and he incorporated it brilliantly. I'll show you all the cover work, which is really tremendous. 2020 rolled around and the release date was February 6th. We had started mailing out all of the press kits with the one sheet and the press release to all of these magazines. And as soon as the record came out, even before, great reviews were coming out, cash box, Blues Review, Living Blues. People all over the world were raving about this record. We had a six month tour booked solid and I was certain that this record was gonna put me back on the top of the blues charts. Now we made the Living Blues charts 
and that was terrific. And all of a sudden, the COVID lockdown hit. The tour was canceled, all the venues closed, and just about every one of them has subsequently gone out of business. I can't tell you how distraught I was. Here I was with maybe the third greatest record of my life, and I couldn't do anything with it. I made some videos of the songs and put them out on YouTube and decided that since nobody can go anywhere and the two weeks turned into two years, I said, now is the time to document my life story in a video book. And so I started up the video book and I believe who is the greatest singer I ever worked with that would have to be Steve Perry was my first story. Now I have an update on Steve who we've been actively campaigning for to get him nominated for the Kennedy Center Honors Award. I'm getting emails on my channel from people all over the world saying, I didn't think this was possible. This is great. And they're taking the information I've provided, filling it out and making the nomination for Steve. The record made it, gosh, it was on the charts even in California. I think we made it to number two on the Roots charts. And we were on various charts for six to seven months. It was a great record, it still is. And I'm gonna play it for you so you can experience it yourself. Well now I took my band to Memphis to play some down home blues.
At this time, my friends, I would just like to say I really appreciate you watching. I appreciate you subscribing and watching some of the other videos. The nomination link for Steve will be in the description and I will make the video available with subtitles in 10 different languages. So my friends, keep some love in your heart, a song in your head, and I will see you down the musical story highway on the next adventure of the old time rock and roller. So long, my friends.